How about you? Oh, me. <laughs> well, I'm, um, I'm working too hard. I'm trying to lose this weight. I can't. Um, I feel like I'm having another midlife crisis. Had one at 30, another one at 40, and now I'm having my third one at 50. Paul's latest midlife crisis has affected his relationships with his wife and children, and even his career as a therapist. Because of it, he is short with his patients, anxious, and even lacks insight into their problems. To talk about it. I, I feel that, I don't know how to put this, but I feel like I'm, I'm just losing my patience. I, I, I'm losing my patience with my patience. I, I, there are sessions when I can barely restrain myself from having just... from an outburst. I want to just lock the door some days and wish everybody would just go away. And you know, I know I'm a good therapist. And, I don't know, maybe this week I need somebody to just tell me to calm down, tell me that everything's okay, that everything's all, all right. Anyway, I, I'm beginning to feel anxious before session. I ask myself all the time if I, if, if I actually know what I think I know about my patients' lives. That couple, for example, the ones who were, who were trying to have the, um, the baby, Amy, I don't think she can ever really be known. I mean, there are certain patterns that identify themselves from her past, but I cannot shrink her. She's too complicated. Paul has also come to question everything he has been taught about being a therapist and has even begun doubting that therapy does any good. I know that you want to believe that we really do have an influence that's always positive. You know, we help people to understand. To understand what they're feeling. And after that, if they make a wrong turn, then it's not our fault. It's human error. But anyway. Who are you really angry at? Myself, obviously. You. <laughs> Every therapist from Freud to Mitchell. Why? <laughs> because we force patients to, to look at themselves and pat ourselves on the back for it. Then we say to them, here's what's wrong with you, now off you go. Did you feel this way before Alex died? More or less, yeah. Has it been on your mind recently in any other context? Like what? I, I, I'm asking, have, have other patients other than Alex made you think like this? You're insinuating. No, I'm just trying to get a, a sense, a history of, of these feelings about psychotherapy. You mean, have I been wondering for a while if our profession is actually helpful to people? Yes, I have. I think about it every day. I think we'd be far more effective if we relied less on instruments and theories and books and more on our own instincts. So, all your training, all your knowledge can lead you astray? I think so. Do you feel this generally, or, or about certain patients in particular? What do you mean? What is it, Gina? What? You've got that look of yours. What look is that? You have the look that says, I have a theory. Regarding what? Oh, come on, Gina, cut the crap. Just tell me what you think. Paul, I'm just sitting here listening to you. I'm listening to your newfound theories about the uselessness of psychotherapy. Certain patients in particular. <laughs> come on. We're back to Laura again. Are we? You think everything is a reaction to Laura. What's a reaction? Me criticizing psychology, dismissing theories. You think I'm making excuses. Even, even Alex getting killed, that's an excuse, right? Psychology is collapsing, so I might as well sleep with Laura. I think that's kind of the way you're... Is that what I'm thinking? Well, am I wrong? You know, when you guess what I'm thinking, it's always about Laura. Like I assume that everything you say is connected to her. Don't you? You're the one who brought her up. Gina is on the right track, but we need to show two more clips before we can be more specific about what is going on. 
one of his wife, Kate, telling Paul that she is having sex with another man, and another of his patient, Amy, asking Paul's permission to cheat on her husband. Let's talk. Okay. I'm seeing someone. <laughs> what do you mean you're, you're... What do you think I mean? Do you really want me to give you permission to have sex with your boss? Just once. Just tell me it's not that bad. I think it might be that bad. Amy is the patient Paul says he can't analyze. Psychologically speaking, what surfaces as a claim of an inability often begins unconsciously as a stubbornness. In other words, can't often means won't. We do not have to look far for reasons why Paul would be reluctant to analyze Amy's actions. If Paul were to investigate what would motivate Amy to have sex with a man she doesn't want a relationship with, he might be led to ask himself why Kate wants the same thing, which could point up factors in their marriage he would rather not deal with at this time. Even more dangerously, Paul might become aware of the possibility that Laura is doing the exact same thing in seeking sex with him, that her interest in him is predicated on their not having a relationship afterwards. This recognition would come at a particularly inopportune time, since Paul has all but decided to attempt sex with Laura.